In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take any artwork, transfer it onto our fringe earring grid paper, and then convert that into your own beautiful beaded creation. So this is my DIY brick stitch fringe earring pattern maker. The way that it works is up here at the top, we have our brick stitch section that we will create our top shape and then underneath down here we have a different shape which is what we will be using to make our fringes. If we take a look at just a basic fringe earring you'll see here at the top we have this triangular section where the beads are all staggered one by one by one in this same brick stitch pattern here. Then if you have a look, coming out of the bottom of that, you have all of your fringes. So we can create whatever shape that we want in this top section here. And then from here, when we use this little line here that says start here as the base of our triangle or square or dome or whatever shape you wanna make, you will have one tassel coming out the bottom of each one of those little beads there. So if, for example, I wanted to make a parrot in a bird cage, I could have like a nice domed top up here and I could have my parrot inside this fringe section and then I can give him a little base, a perch that he can be resting on and sort of work on it from there. Now the first thing I'm going to do is find myself a clip art just by searching on the internet for one of a black and white parrot image. So here's a clip art that I found from a website called clipartlibrary.com. With this, I'm going to use this and the grid pattern that you can get straight from the Bead Spider website. There's a link in the description to go and download that one. And I'm going to transfer my clip art image onto my grid so that I can then use that to create my earrings. So if we look at this parrot, we need to think about how we can position it so that it will fit nicely onto the grid. So because the grid is generally in straight lines, you can see up and down and across, we need to put this in a way that it will transfer easily. So because we are wanting those straight lines, there's a lovely big straight line here that we can use as our parrot's back. So see how much easier that will transfer compared to this shape here. Now when it comes to actually transferring them, either if you're quite skilled you can just start drawing based on the shape there, but otherwise if you have maybe a light or an iPad or a uh, even just the, f the, the light on your phone, you can pop the page directly underneath, position it with your light or against a window if you prefer, and then position that where you want that to be approximately and start filling that in with a pen. So now to put him inside of a cage, let's sort of draw ourselves a little top piece. So this is gonna give us an equal distance. See there's two spaces here, two spaces here. This is gonna give us a nice spacing with which we can work. So this is going to be the size, the width of our dome piece just here. And now I'm going to sort of come along in here. So this gives us a nice shape here. We can say the top of our cage even comes across here. You can sort of bring it on down the edge all the way to the very, very bottom. And then let's, let's put like a, a base of our cage. There we go. And I'll just color that in as well. We can use like a, a gray up the edges here and then we can sort of work on it from there add some extra detail until we've got our final finished design coming together we are all finished and now to turn it into beadwork once you've come up with your final design it's time to pick the beads that you want to use for your particular design you can choose whether or not you want to use seed beads or you can also use delica beads do be mindful that the Delica beads are going to give you a 
smaller finished result and also I find that seed beads will give you a much better flowing tassel. The delicate tassels tend to be a little bit stiffer, they don't move so nicely as compared to ones with seed beads. So whichever style you prefer, it's entirely up to you. Now it's time to talk about the materials you're going to need. Obviously I've chosen beads that are all going to match the colours that I've drawn into my design here, but as well as that, you're also going to need some beading thread and a beading needle. You can use Spidalon thread or you can use Fireline, it's entirely up to you. And then you're also going to need a pair of earring findings just there. As well as that, you'll have to have a nice clear working surface ready to begin working. I'm looking at my top just here and I'm thinking I'd like it to be a little bit more domed. So to create that effect, I'm going to actually double this row, so it's double the thickness, and I'm also going to double this row just here. So it's going to make them a little bit taller in each instance, but it will make it look a lot more rounded. So I'll show you when we get to that. I've got myself about a meter's worth of thread. Obviously using a white thread would be better, but I want you all to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to use a blue one, and I've put myself a little needle onto the end there. So as I said earlier, because I'm going to be extending this row and this row, I'm going to do them absolutely last, which means that I'm going to begin here instead. So working in brick stitch, we're going to begin with this little bead here and the one beside it, and then we're going to work across to the end of the row. So because the first two beads on that row was one silver and one transparent blue, I've put them both onto the needle I'm going to slide them down towards the end, leaving a little bit of a tail. Then I'm going to take my needle back through both beads once, pull it all the way through, position them neatly side by side, go back up the first bead, and back down the bead beside one final time. So now that I'm exiting from the bottom of this bead just here, I'm going to pick up the next bead as per my pattern, which is another transparent blue. And see how we're exiting from this side? We're gonna loop around and pass down into this bead at the very end to pull that through and lock the next bead along in our row. Then we're going to secure it by going back up the bead we just added, down the previous bead, and back out of the bead that we've just added. Now we have three beads side by side in position ready to add our fourth bead, a silver bead. So now that I'm exiting from this side, I'm going to loop around, pass into that endmost bead, pull it all the way through, and back down the bead that we just added. If it comes a little loose, don't worry, as you pull it all tight, it will lock back into position, like so. Then we're going to secure that once more so that it's extra tight. The reason that we're doing this is because this is going to give us a very straight line when we finish doing this initial row of beads. I'm gonna continue working in this same pattern along that first row until I get to the end bead, which is the 13th one in the row. There we go, all done. It's time to add our next row. When we're working in brick stitch, we're going back in the opposite direction. So if you have a look, I can just come up and it's going to be these two beads just here. If we look very closely, you can see in between each one of our beads, there's this little bridge of thread. This little fella here is how we're going to be attaching our beads to the previous row. So once I pick up the first two beads of the next row, I'm going to go underneath the second bridge. So if you have a look, 
Here's the first one that joins the first bead to the second. Here is the second thread bridge joining the second bead to the third. So if I just take my needle underneath that little bridge of thread, pull all the way through, you'll see the two beads sit close to being right on top. They're not quite in position yet, so I now have to make sure I'm avoiding that little bridge of thread and I go back up the first bead that we've just added. So if we have a look, that first little bead doesn't quite sit right. So let's go back and we'll fix that one. So I'm exiting from this second bead here. We go back down into that first bead. And then without picking up any beads, without going under any thread bridges, nothing like that, let's just go back up into that second bead because when we pull that tight it's going to just lock those two beads nice and tightly together side by side so that they're both nicely in position on top of our previous row. Now I can pick up my next bead which following my pattern is another transparent blue and again it's exactly the same process I'm going to go underneath the thread bridge, just there, pull my thread all the way through, and now back up that bead just there, the bead we just added. The good thing is, because I've added this bead previously, I don't have to worry about them sitting weirdly or anything anymore. I can now just continue working in that same way. So now if I pick up my next bead, which is a silver, I'll go under the next thread bridge in the exact same way again. We're gonna just work in this exact same way along the entirety of this row. Go all the way through, back up the bead, pull that tight. And there we go. When we pull that tight, that's gonna sit nicely above the previous row. And now I'll just continue working until I get to the end of the row. we go and that's the end of that row now as well you can see we're one bead less than this one here and that brings us perfectly in position to start going back in the other direction so we're going to start working in the exact same way coming back in this direction now following our pattern and again the way we're going to start is by picking up the first two beads of this row and then going underneath that same second thread bridge so not this first one, we're going under the second thread bridge. We'll pull it all the way through, go back up that first bead, and now don't forget when we do one of these little row reducers, this first little corner bead doesn't quite sit right, so we're going to go down that bead there and lock it in beside this bead that we've just added as well by going straight back up it without picking up any other beads. There we go, nice and neat now. So now I'll just continue working in the exact same way, pick up one bead at a time and go under the next thread bridge all the way along this until I get to the end of this row. Then I'm gonna do the exact same way to come back in the other direction until we've got four rows added in total. So there we go, I've got four rows completed now. If I was just gonna continue reducing down, 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 row by row by row, again, I would create that same triangular shape. So you can see just here, look, there's plenty of beads at the bottom. Every single row gets one less, one less, one less, one less, until you get to having just two at the very, very top. But in this instance, we want to make a dome shape. So to create that dome, I need to do some slightly different changes. So if you have a look at this one here, I actually have one less bead here. I haven't got a bead there, nor have I got one here. And then I reduce it again even further to make it multiple beads smaller rather than just one bead smaller each time. The way that I'm going to do that is first of all, I have to move myself over to position myself so that I am going to be skipping this space just here and I won't need to put a bead in. The best way to do that 
is just going directly down the bead beside and then back up till you're in position where you will need to be adding beads in. So because we want to miss just one, I'm going to have a bead here and a bead here. How I start is a tiny bit different. So if I pick up the two beads that I'm going to need for my pattern and pass under the first thread bridge. So when I do that, what's going to happen is there isn't really enough space for both seed beads to sit after that little spot where I was exiting. So one will go before and one will go after. Then I can go back up this bead, pull that tight and lock it into place. When you do it this way, often this little bead will automatically sit neatly in position, but if it doesn't, you can go back down it, across and up. But as you can see here, this one's sitting pretty neatly already, and now I can just continue along adding beads on this row until I get to the other end as per my pattern. So bear in mind, of course, that I'm also reducing another bead of this one so that when I get to this end over here, I don't want to have a bead over here. I'm going to end one bead earlier. So now we'll just add the last bead in the exact same way. Come down here, under that thread bridge, and back up that last bead. And there you go. See, you don't have to continue working. You've already got that one bead less on both sides. Now I need to do the same premise again. So again, I don't need a bead here and I don't need a bead here. I'm going to do it in the exact same way. I'm going to go down the bead beside, up the one above, And now again, I want one bead to sit on this side, one bead to sit on this side. So I'll pick them both up, go underneath the first thread bridge there, sit them nicely into position, go back up. Now I'll just continue on. I've just got to do two more beads and then that's going to give us the top of our dome pattern almost. Now while we're here, we can of course add our little earring finding if we want to. Otherwise, it's up to you. You can come back later, uh, but I'm going to do it right now. If I want to attach my ear wire, the easiest place is to these two central beads. So like we have been before, I'm going to weave down this bead beside and back up the one next to it to bring me into position. I'll pick up two of my seed beads. I'm going to go for the same silver color, I think. And then I'll thread through the bottom of this little ear wire piece here. Let's go back down these two beads and into that same bead where we started. As we pull that tight, it's going to just hold that little loop nicely into place. Now we can give ourselves a second little side by going into the bead beside again. I'll pick up two beads once more, go through the loop, and then back down those two beads and through that bead there, back where we started, pull it tight, and, and there we are, nice and neat. I can go back up this side here and if I want I can re-secure it by just going through the same thread path once more. So through that little loop and back down these beads into the top, pull that tight, that's going to secure that once more. And then just to make it a little bit neater, I really like this as an idea for, for having the this little top part look extra neat. Is by picking up one last little seed bead and I'm going to hide the front of this loop by just going straight down into the other side again and that will sit nice and neatly in front of that little loop hiding it. 
Now it's time to start adding these base rows back on and start using my tail thread for these other rows. So remember how I said we were going to extend this row and this row here. I'm going to show you that. It's going to be a really quick, easy process where I use a technique that's called two drop brick stitch. Now that I've got my needle on my tail thread, I'm going to start working in two drop brick stitch. The difference between two drop brick stitch and single brick stitch is that I'm going to be using double the amount of beads each time. So to start off, instead of using two beads, I'm using four beads. As well, because I want to extend the size of this row, much like how we were doing it with the final two rows, I want one bead to be here, one bead to be here, so that means I need to use my first thread bridge. I'll pick up the first four beads of this row and pass underneath that first thread bridge. As I pull them tight, you see they're going to sit approximately into position and I'm going to pass back up the final two beads and pull that tight. There we go. That's going to lock both rows simultaneously together onto my work. Now I will pick up the next two beads, go under the next thread bridge, pull them down and back up until they're tight. I'm going to do this all the way to the end, following my pattern, but the last two beads are a little bit different. So I'll show you that in just a second. Now that I'm about to add the final two pairs of beads to my work, they're a little bit different here. The first one is exactly the same as always. I go under my thread bridge and pull that back up tight through my work. Now, if we look, there isn't another thread bridge to add my final two rows. That's okay though. We're going to just take our beads and go back underneath the very same thread bridge that we've just used for the previous pair of beads. So there it is just there. I'm going to go under that same thread bridge. And back up and that will sit nicely in position, ready to start my next row. Pick up four beads, go underneath that first thread bridge, pull it all the way through, and back up the two beads. And we're gonna just continue along the row in the exact same way till we get to the very end before we can add on our fringes. So I've got my dome piece finished now, but first I'm going to weave this thread in back into my work and then I'm going to bring in a new thread to start doing my tassels. I find that by doing that it's way easier to get soft draping tassels. If you use this one, one you're going to run out of thread pretty soon anyway, but two it means that it can often get a little too tight on these first couple of tassels. So if I just weave back up a few beads, I can do a really quick method to tie off my thread. I'm going to just go back into my work till I'm somewhere in the middle around about here. I'm going to go what I like to call around the houses. So basically you just go into the bead beside, back into the bead you were just in, into the bead beside again, back into the first one. We're going to just keep doing this a couple of times and this is just going to make it impossible for this bead, uh, for this thread, sorry, to come undone and come loose. Now that I've gone through there a few times, I'm happy with that. I'll just weave into a few more beads to get myself away from where I was threading round and we can just cut that thread off. Adding in a new thread is almost exactly the same. I've got myself about two meters worth of thread. This time though, I'm going to weave in through a few beads, two or three, it doesn't matter however many, and now do that same round the houses process 
going into the bead beside once, back into the first bead, back up again, back down. And now I'm going to weave across to the corner, ready to start adding fringes. So now that it's time to add that first fringe in, if we have a look, you can see there's handy numberings to tell you how many beads there are that goes all the way down. So this first one here is 41 of all just that same silver color bead that we've been using in our top. So that's a nice easy place to start with. So let's add that fringe in. I'm ready to pick up my 41 beads and I'll slide them down right here to the very, very end of my work. Now to turn back around, we're going to skip the very, very last bead. This one here is going to work like a little plug on the end that helps us to keep all of these other beads in place. Now we're going to just weave straight back up every single one of the beads. You don't have to do them all in one go, but we'll continue all the way up until we get to the very, very top of our work. I'm going to finish by coming out of these two beads here, back where we started this little fringe from, pulling all the way through until eventually that last little bead just lugs there nicely onto the end, blocking that little piece from falling off. Now, it's important that it's not on too tight. If you pull it too tight, it'll be very stiff and rigid. See that? But if it's too loose, you'll start getting a gap of thread at the top here. So we don't really want either of those things. It's a matter of just finding what sits neatly, but also isn't too firm. Now I'm ready to go down this next pair of beads, pull all the way through, and now I'm in position to add my next little tassel piece. This is also a good point to just check the tension of this one. So if this is too tight, you can give it a bit of a roll, almost like a rolling pin, just to get it that little bit looser, a little bit softer. And once you're happy with it, feel free to add your next tassel. If we come back to our pattern again, we can see that all these ones down here are this transparent blue color until we get to around about number 25, 6, 7. Then we have two of our brown color. We have these ones here also in transparent. Then we have a silver, a brown, and we finish off with two silvers. So I've got those beads threaded on now. We're going to work in the exact same way. We'll leave one bead off to the end. And we'll just thread back up all of these beads here until we get back to our dome section. Get your tension till it's feeling just right. Head over into the next bead, pull your thread all the way through, and then feel free to do your rolling technique again before adding on those next tassels. We're gonna add tassels in the exact same way until we get to the very, very end, adding on our last final tassel now. There we are. All finished. Now all I have to do is weave my thread in the same way I've been doing and cut it off and our little bird is done. <laughs>